morning early, I was praying before I even come to the church. God send the heavens rain on us. Let it rain on us. Not a sprinkle, not just a drop here and there, but let it rain from the heavens on this house. Send the rain, Lord. I read in the scriptures what it said, I'll send the latter rain and the former rain together. I hear the prophet saying, you better get ready and get ready and get ready because I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Glory to God. God sending his presence for you and for me to experience his love, to experience his grace, his mercy, his goodness on our lives. There is a spiritual presence in this room for us this morning. Hallelujah. And I just want to follow the hymn. Well, I've been working on a message. And the message that I would have preached this morning is on the family. What the family is, what, how God created the family as a special entity in the, in the world. Basically what the whole thing was, we got to have revival in the family. There's got to be revival in dad and revival in mother. We've got to get the family right. We don't get the family right, we'll never get the church right. We don't get the family right, we'll never get the nation right. We don't get the family right, we'll never get the city and the community right. There's got to be revival in the family. And you're here this morning and our loving Heavenly Father is pouring down His love upon us. This is not an ordinary service. You can't just go to any church and experience and feel what you're feeling here this morning. I don't care if you've never been in church, you know what I'm talking about because you're the God who created you is making a, a covenant with you even now. You feel the presence of Almighty God. All the money in the world can't buy that for you. And all of your religious knowledge and all of that stuff that you think you know and your opinion, it cannot do anything for you. But God's love can forever change you and make the big difference in your life. I don't know what you're looking for this morning, but I know who you need. There's a loving God who loves you this morning. People are praying around here. Matter of fact, people have been praying all week long. I'm not talking about little prayers. I'm talking about sincere, dedicated, committed prayer every day, every day, every day. I believe God wants to meet us here this morning. And here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you all to stand. <clears throat> Your family is important to God. I want you to understand something. Although I'm not going to preach the message, I want to tell you God wants to have revival in your home. God wants to have revival in your marriage. God wants to have revival in your husband and wife relationship. God wants to have revival in your kids. The best thing you can ever do for your marriage, the best thing you can ever do for your kids, the best thing you can ever do for yourself is to get yourself in a position where God Almighty can do whatever He wants to do in your life. I'm not asking you to shake this preacher's hand. I'm not asking you to join this church. I'm asking you to meet the Creator that created you. The family in America is under attack. Never have we witnessed such a force of evil and darkness that we have in this generation. The families in America are under attack. Your kids are under attack. Friend, we need a revival in the family. It's broken our hearts. It's broken our lives. What we need is God to come and heal our homes and heal our families. The devil's done everything he could against you to destroy your happiness, to destroy your family. But I tell you, I feel like I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. 
I believe there's gonna be revival in the family and healing in the family. We've all seen enough divorce and devastation and drugs and, and harm that's come to our families. Dear God, I wanna see heaven move in among our families, among our children and grandchildren. Do I hear it, amen? Hallelujah. Don't ever forget this, God is for the family. And God wants to bless the family. God wants to do a miracle for your family. The love that you once had when you first met that girl or met that man is a special God-given gift. God don't want it to disintegrate. God want it, wants it to grow and multiply and blossom into something heavenly. Hallelujah. We've got to build the altar back at the house. We've got to repair the altars in our home. We've got to have family altar time where Jesus Christ meets with our home and our family. Listen, friend. The church can't save us. God can save us. The preacher can't save us. The counselor can't save us. The psychologist can't save us. But the blood of Jesus can save us. Hallelujah. It's time that we get the blood back over the doorpost of our home. It's time that we open up the covenant of God and place it over our marriage, over our children. Hallelujah. And let it be a revival that breaks out in our home. Hallelujah. How many would like a revival of love to break out in your house? Glory to God. Glory to God. A peace and salvation, grace in abundance. My Lord, my Lord. God, I just pray for revival in, in these homes. Remi revival in these families. God, I want to see revival all over America in the family, in the home. I rebuke the devourer, I rebuke the devil through the power of Jesus Christ. And I pray favor of God over all these marriages, over all these homes, over all these families. I pray that heaven would fill their hearts and fill their homes. I pray that their children would be blessed and highly favored of God that their children will literally wear the presence of Almighty God because they come from a home where grace abounds, grace abounds, grace abounds, and more grace abounds in that relationship, in that family. God, bring revival to the family. Revival back in our home. Hallelujah. I may repeat this again when I get to preach that message, so you'll have to forgive me if I do. But I feel it's important. I want to share you this. Several years ago, my grandmother passed away. My grandfather had already passed on many years earlier. We had the funeral, went to the graveyard, had the service there. Families got in their car and left. Veronica and I were the only one in the cemetery. She walked to the car, and, and I did with her. I got to the car door, and I just couldn't go. I turned her back around, asked her to just sit in the car for a minute, and I'll be right back. I went out and stood by this fresh covered grave, my dear granny. And I thank God for a precious lady who stood the test. Right now, there is, I can't even, we can't even count the missionaries, evangelists, and pastors, and church leaders that come from that precious lady's faith. I stood there, and I wept, and I cried, and then I said, God, I thank you. Wow, I thank you. And I just praising the Lord. All of a sudden, there's a hand on my shoulder. I thought Veronica had got back out of the car and come out. I looked around, there's a man standing there one that I had recognized, one I recognized and knew, had known him all my life. I'm just a young preacher. Tears running down his face. I don't know where he come from. I thought we were the only ones in the cemetery. There's no other automobile that I could even see. He just walked out behind the, from a tree or somewhere out there. 
put his hand on my shoulder and I looked and tears was running down his face. And he said, you know what? Those are the two of the greatest people I've ever known. He said, when I was a young man, I watched your dad and your granddad in the fields. And he said, everybody else was cussing their team of mules, but your grandfather never raised his voice and never, never cussed. And he just had that same tone of voice, but he had less trouble out of his mules than anybody in the field. And he said, one day I caught him and I said, Mr. Walker, what, uh, what's your, what, 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 how do you do this? You don't raise your voice at your mules, you don't cuss your mules, and they do everything you tell them. I see the rest of them getting mad and throwing fits out here, and he said, you've never done that. He said, how, how, did, you, how did you do that? He said, I'll tell you what, son, when come time to quit this evening, he said, you come home with me. My wife will fix a meal for you, and we'll feed you. And after, meal, after the meal, I'll tell you how I did that. He said, he took me home with him, and his wife fixed the meal. We sat down and he bowed his head and he prayed over that meal. And we ate. We laughed and talked and he, we got up and went to the, what was the, by the fireplace, little living room area. And he said, Mr. Walker, I ask you a question today and you've never told me the answer to it. He said, he never said a word. He just walked over to the table and got a big old Bible and put it in his lap and started flipping the pages. He come to that place where it talked about how much God loved me and what Jesus did for me. He said, son, this is the scripture that changed my life and he'll change your life too. And he said, I, he taught me into getting on my knees at the chair that, and he led me to Jesus. Now he said, all those years have gone by. And he said, I'm still serving that same Jesus, his savior. And he led me to him. And he said, what I found out later that night was every night they got on their knees and they prayed. They had family altar time. Friend, I told you that story, a true story that saved a young man's life. It lasted a lifetime. He looked in my face and put both hands on his sh my shoulders and he said, son, don't you ever quit preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Well, there's a whole lot of other people out there like me. Your granddad reached me, you can reach a lot of them. You keep reaching them. So I wanna tell all of you this. If we'll keep the altar at our home, we can bring people to Christ. If we have a family altar, we'll have the influence that we can bring somebody to Jesus. They're all around you. Somebody is watching you. Somebody is watching your conversation and your action. Why don't you bring them home with you? Lead them to Jesus Christ. Show them the way. Do I hear it? Amen. How many wants revival in your home? How many wants your home to be blessed? Let's just lift our hands to God. Come on. Let's lift our hand to God, and I want us to say, God, bless our home, bless our family, bless our children, our grandchildren, our friends. Bless our home and our family. Cover it by the blood of Jesus. Bless me to bless others in Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. We're singing a song a while ago. And Blake, I don't know where he's at. He's in here somewhere, but Blake was sitting behind me. And Blake's seven. He was sitting behind me. He reached over and put his arm around me. And he was singing with everything that was in him. That song of praise and worship and love. I watched the Spirit of God moving a while ago, and I watched Drew come past me. And I saw him get over there and his hands went up and the Spirit of God is on it. You know what? If it's not affecting our families, we need to do something. If it's not affecting our kids, we need to do something. We need to get this thing right and get open before God so our homes and our families can be blessed. I want you to hunger and I know you do. You wouldn't be here this morning. Less hunger for revival in our family. 
I pray that every member of your family gets saved. You say, well, I don't, I got some wild ones. You don't know how wild Don and I was. Mama kept praying until God saved us. So you may have Walt and Don in your family, but they're not too mean for God to catch. Say amen. Thank God you so much it. for watching this video. And I want to do this for you today. I want you to join me and just say the, the prayer of the sinner. And I hope that you will let Jesus Christ come into your heart and change your life. God's got a good plan for your life. All you need to do is invite him in. And the Bible said he'll come in and live inside of you. So pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I recognize that I am a sinner, that God loves me, and that God wants to save me. So I repent of my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and has come to save me. I accept him right now as my Savior and my Lord. In Jesus' name, and I thank you, God, for saving my life. Amen. God bless you, my friend, and may the Lord bless you and keep you always in his love.